Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name's Mark Taylor. On this project, we're going to be making Baby Yoda. Now, I'm not very familiar with this character, so I made a couple of clay models to help guide me along to get familiar with the character. You can see these long ears here is the reason why I'm going with this piece of wood across another piece of wood like this to, to give strength and stability to those ears. So here I'm looking at the, uh, the dowel and finding a drill bit that works that fits with the dowel. I'd usually line the dowel up with the base of the drill bit, the shank, which is what size hole it's going to drill. You can judge by the shank. And just go right into the center. I just drew a, a cross from corner to corner. It's a good fit. And I'll find roughly the center of this piece of wood. I'll mark it with the drill bit, just pushing it in. I'll double check it. And it's right in the middle. So we'll drill it. So I have a pair of nail clippers for a cat. And I just crimp around that dowel and just snap it. It cuts into it deep enough that it won't splinter and uh, makes a quick go of it. So I'm using my reference material, the pictures that I have here, to draw in the football shaped head that he's got and big old ears that he's got and once I start carving this piece I realize that this piece of wood is really tough it's it's brittle um, I haven't run across too much basswood that's like this um, I'll have to see if the rest of the pieces that I got are like this. Um, it being a hard piece uh, is good for detail. It'll hold a lot of detail, so it, it does work out for me uh, in the long run, but uh, it sure is a, a tough piece for just whittling. So it's right along about here that I decided this is going to take me forever. I'm going to go ahead and take this to the bandsaw <clears throat> and uh, and trim it up and it'll be a, a lot easier uh, cutting out the front profile. So here you see that I took this piece of wood to the bandsaw. It was just so difficult to carve. The bandsaw isn't a necessity, but it sure makes it a lot easier when you run into a difficult piece of wood like this one. So recently I was looking up Disney artists. Now Disney has a reputation for uh, having extremely good artists uh, and in producing extremely good artwork. 
I looked up an artist, and his name is Raymond Kidman, and he is a was a sign carver for Disney. He, he currently is retired and runs his own wood carving school. And something he said really rang with me. When he started working for Disney and would take his artwork to a supervisor and say, okay, here's a, here's a wooden sign I carved. What do you think? He said, yeah, it's a good start. Now I'll take it to the next step. And, well, at first he was like, what the heck? But what he learned was by having that and keeping that in mind, taking it to the next step, and then being told for the second time and the third time, okay, take it to the next step. Take it to the next level. Um, helped push him as an artist. Helped him become more refined um, and made him into the artist that he is today. A good lesson. So I took it to the bandsaw and I cut off the bottom. Now you can see it's much more proportionally correct uh, that I cut the bottom off. So those of you that are familiar with the character, it's starting to look a lot more like it's supposed to look. So here I'm working on the collar of this jacket. Just the stop cut all the way around and we're leaving. Here I'm drawing in the facial details using my reference material. I'm taking my time, I do erase a lot. So when you draw it and erase and draw it until you feel like you get it right. Having patience with this, there's a lot of little tight curves here. Uh, and you'll see how I handle that later on using a sanding stick. I was gonna use a Dremel, but uh, a lot more control with a little sanding stick. Here I'm using a mini gouge. It's a number seven sweep. And it does good work of hollowing out the ear area.
Here I'm using the sanding stick. And I'm using the sanding stick to get the impressions into the face, so like the, the deep areas around the eyes, uh, above the eyebrows. Now I could have used a rotary tool, uh, but I went with this just to have a little bit more control to, to be able to move a little slower. Uh, because the slower you move, the more control you're going to have. Uh, and it seemed to work out pretty good. Right here I have a little ball tool, as you can see, and I'm just burnishing areas and you can give all these nice little indents and smooth out uh, areas that otherwise would be very difficult to do without it uh, there's so many tight smooth graduations in a face this is just a really really good tool to use to help you smooth out these areas that would otherwise be difficult to do. So I'm at the point now where I'm getting ready to take this and paint it. But I'm looking at my reference material and these sleeves are a bit long. I could shorten them to make them more accurately match my study reference. But they're also flatter than I would like. These sleeves on my study reference come out further, but I just did not have the wood to do it. So what I might do is take some two-part epoxy and just add these sleeves to come out more. Because that's a pretty important part of this character. What, what really makes something look like what you're trying to make it look like is the is the outer perimeter of it gives you that instant uh, acknowledgement oh that's what that is by the outer perimeter of what it is that's why when soldiers are in battle they use camouflage and they put sticks and, and branches and ghillie suits to blur their outer dimensions so they're not recognizable as a human. And, and so these sleeves that come out and, and shoot right down and the three little fingers that come out is such an important part of this character that I think I'm gonna just go ahead and add two part epoxy to bring these sleeves out and to add those little fingers to it. Okay, so here's what I did. I, I shortened these, these uh, sleeves on this jacket to make it look more in proportion to what my study reference says it should be. And I'll add part epoxy onto here but I might as well add some movement since I'm going to be using the two-part epoxy. Now I could do this with an extra piece of wood, cut this off and add it out but since I'm going to be in the epoxy and using the epoxy I'll, I'll make this sleeve completely out of epoxy and make it more forward like I have this character. That'll add a little bit of movement, a little bit more life to it. 
And as you see, I have a little bit of a sweep here, adding a little bit of movement as well. Okay, so I'm switching over really from wood carving to sculpting at this point. Um, I have my two-part epoxy already mixed up. I have, uh, I removed this arm since I'm, I'm going to be forming this complete arm out of two-part epoxy and extending this arm out a little bit. Um, here's my sculpting tools and it's really, this is about two sets um, of sculpting tools. There's, there's some repetition here and um, but it's fine. I customize these every once in a while just for whatever I'm working on. So I'll be using those. I got a couple of cheap plastic ones that you can pick up really cheap at the art supply store. I have these silicone, I believe they're called nubs, silicone nubs. These are very useful because they don't stick to the two-part epoxy. Eventually as the resin uh, hardener starts to kick in, this becomes very sticky. So you'll have to, if you're using metal tools, keep them wet and, and it won't be so hard to work with. And I have some tools that I make myself. This is a, a piece of 10 gauge copper wire. I just took a hammer and smashed the end down here and, and uh, just made them in different shapes when I was done smashing I sanded them uh, and you can make these as smooth as you want just keep going finer and finer with your uh, sandpaper and this really you could do anything with you could do what you would do, use these for with this um, just having a variety uh, I'm just bragging that's what it is I'm just bragging <laughs> So, uh, go ahead and I will wet the wood. I've found that wetting the wood a little bit helps the epoxy stick to the wood. Um, and when attaching epoxy to the wood, uh, crimping it onto the wood, mashing it down into the wood, uh, really helps it adhere as well. So we have the slightly damp. I've put the two-part epoxy on here and kind of shaped it like the sleeve. And folks, just a few minutes ago, I saw the biggest skunk I've ever seen walk across my back porch. And now my whole house stinks. Pew. Hope he's not living anywhere close. Cause he's a stinky boy. As that starts to cure and get harder, it'll become easier to work with. Right now, it is super soft. So I'll go ahead and extend the other sleeve. All right, so I have both arms done, both sleeves done, let's put it that way. And I mashed a little piece of clay like this, which is gonna be the hand holding a little silver ball. Um, and I, as you can see, I haven't carved in any fingers. I'm going to let that firm up a bit more because it's really sticky and super soft, it just deforms and it's very hard to work with, with detail, um, when it's this soft. So you get the basic shapes and forms, and then as it progresses, you can go back I can carve this, that uh, stick shift ball into a smaller ball and put the fingers into it, carve the fingers into it. Uh, I will just make sure I crimp it in there real good with the other 
play and let that set up a little bit and do the details later. So basically what I did is I took X-Acto knife and cut out the part and get it generally to the rough shape. Wet the tool, the metal tool, and uh, and go in and kind of smooth out all the corners. And I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. Now we'll come over to this hand. All right, so here's where we're at right now. I'm going to let this set up um, because if I try to do anything else with this and I mash on it or press up against it, it's just going to deform. So we're going to set that down and we have a test piece here that we can constantly refer back to to see how hard that is without touching it. Uh, whenever I glue or use epoxies, I always make a test piece so I don't have to disturb that. I can always rely on the test piece. It's all the same batch. A little bit of water. This is just an undercoat. I'll do a little bit of uh, flow aid helps the paint flow a little nicer. Just a couple drops. And this is just priming it, getting it ready. The reason why I'm going to use primer instead of doing a wood, like a stain with paint, is because the different colors here. I want to make sure that it gets completely covered. So I'm just really putting it, this is a half inch oval wash brush. All right, here we are, two coats of gesso. Something I just want to show you right here. See that negative space? That space where it actually looks black in between the fingers? Negative space can be a very powerful thing in a carving or a sculpture. It adds a lot of a lot of depth. Something to consider. I have a mixture here of sage green, forest green, and hunter green. Now I have three or four different pictures of this character and they're all a different green. So I don't know if, if it was, you know, lighting or or what, but <laughs> there's so many different shades of green and so many different pictures, it's hard to tell what the true color is. But I think this is pretty close, pretty representational of what the character's supposed to be.
All right, here we have an oil brush, a brush, a paintbrush made for oils. It's made from hog hair. It's very stiff, and it's perfect for stippling, doing a stippling effect like this. And here we're doing, with a slightly lighter color, dry brushing. We're wiping most of the paint off and just raking it across. You can see it really kind of brought out where the knife marks were. Give it a, a more dimensional look. All right, I'm going to go straight in to this paint. the eyes. This character has no whites in the eyes. Just brown. I think this particular character is supposed to be a baby at this point. Take your time, the eyes are very, very important. That's what people kind of connect to. That's what they... They look at and they really want to believe in the eyes. I'm gonna let this dry and we're gonna put the dark pupil in the middle and we're going to find some clear and put clear over this so it'll really pop. In the meantime, while that's drying, I have iridescent rich silver. Now I learned about this color from Adam Savage. And he says it's the closest thing that he could get to a metal looking color. I'm a fan of Adam Savage. I try to watch his everyday builds, which are almost every day. And I've learned a lot from him. People like Adam Savage, Jimmy DeResta. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.